Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at this pen. It was sent to me by Cult Pens, thank you, uh, for review purposes. And it's a, a, a pen by a brand that I have discussed before, Oto. It's a Japanese brand, as far as I know, and they make some nice pens. I have reviewed the F Spirit and the F Lapa, and I was particularly pleased with the F Lapa. I had some issues with it, but one thing that I really liked was the well, almost semi-flex nib. It has a very nice, very springy nib. And then Nigel suggested this pen in one of the uh, previous reviews I did. He said, you should check this out. And the cult pens picked up on that and said, well, how about we send you one? You know, so there we go. Auto Tasche. Taschen is a German word, meaning, as far as I know, bag or pocket. And clearly this is a small pen. Yes, these are relatively large hands, but not that large. Uh, this is a very small pen. Uh, and it has some very nice features. So I'm going, going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And then I'll do a writing sample. Um, let's start. The very top of the pen. There is a bit of a reflective, chromish thing. We have the cap. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the cap and the clip. Um, now the interesting thing is the whole proportion of the pen. I'll come back to that in a second. But all the black you see here, that's all cap. See? Now, come back to that in a second. First let's have a look at the clip. You see the clip? The clip is very springy, pleasant to use. And then we get the actual barrel. Now what you see here, that's pretty much the only bit of barrel the pen has. So you have a nice chrome colored silver uh, center band and then you have this barrel and then the end. And that, that little black thing there, you see it at the end? That's actually a rubber o-ring. Now, you may think, what? what's the point of this pen? Why does it have an o-ring there? What's what's the, the deal? The deal is this. It is an extremely small pen and it has a huge cap. This is the cap. You see that? The cap is about as big as the pen. And what you do is you take it off and then you post it. Hence the little rubber o-ring that makes sure that the section will not fall off. You see it's on there very tightly. I'm sure I can make it fly off if I want to, but it's on there quite tightly. Then you have the section, which is very long. And then altogether, you have a pretty normally sized pen, which comes in an extremely small package, which is very, very cool. I like the design. I have to point out that there was some writing on the cap, um, which now this is all that remains. I put this pen in my pocket because it's a pocket pen, right? Um, and the writing that's on there it said auto, and there was some other um, some some markings. I think they rubbed off, so I don't mind. But if you really want to keep that in pristine condition, then you probably should put it in your pocket, or at least put it in a pouch. Um, but, you know, I thought, let's let's see how rugged this thing is, and it's, it is rugged. There's not a scratch, there's not a dent, there's nothing, just a little writing that was rubbed off. Okay, so this section. Is it pleasant to hold? Yes, I find it pleasant to hold. Um, I, I'm a bit undecided on whether it's plastic or metal, um, but it's it has a little bit of texture. You may be able to see that. It is not super smooth. It has some type of... of texture to it which doesn't make it slippery and then you have the nib and the nib says iridium point has a bit of scroll work we've seen those types of nibs before but this nib too has a very interesting bit of springiness to it which I'll show you in the writing sample okay now for those of you who are interested can I also use this pen unposted well that will definitely depend on the size of your hands uh, for me it's not possible because it, it, it disappears. I, I can't let it rest on my hand, and this is very uncomfortable. But, you know, the pen wasn't made for that. I'm sure you could scribble it to one or two words if, if you need to. Um, but clearly, it's easy to post the pen. What I like, if you take the Twisby Mini, for example, that has threads at the end, and that makes for very secure posting, but it also takes time. And if you have to write down something quickly, you have to unscrew the cap, turn the pen around, 
screw the cap back into the barrel and write with this one and you can write so you're talking about a second maybe which I think is pretty cool okay ink delivery how does this work well international short cartridge and that's all let's do it I've tried a lot I've tried a Monteverde mini converter doesn't work I've tried one of those Caveco mini converters even that one doesn't fit in and the reason is this is the barrel so you can unscrew that and this is how much space is left this is an international short cartridge so you cannot put a long cartridge in there which would be nice would increase in capacity but that's impossible um, there really isn't a lot of space left so this is what you what you get and this is what you do uh, now I have it's a pretty fine nib being Japanese it says really in point I'm not sure whether it's a German nib but it's it's made according to Japanese specifications I'm sure it's fine um, and yesterday I've been doing a lot of writing with it the reason I'm holding this up is that I want to see how much ink is left I've done a lot of writing I've written at least three full A4 pages and I've written a, I've taken a bunch of notes with them and the cartridge is half empty or half full um, so you will you will definitely burn through some ink but on the other hand because it is not a super broad nib these cartridges should last and let's face it what is easier than just swapping a cartridge right you can take five with you and just slip it in there that's all there's to it now one thing I'd like to point out is that the amount of threads on the barrel bloody hell that's a lot of threads so if you want to screw this in place this is how long it takes which I think is just a little bit over the top but you know they probably had a reason to do that at least it's secure you won't accidentally open this up in your pocket or, or whatever okay what do I like about it what do I don't like about it well I love the size I think it's a brilliant pen it's rugged it's all everything on the outside is metal so it can definitely take a bit of pressure same goes for the barrel as I said section I'm not entirely sure but that's that might just be metal too some type of aluminum or something aluminium um, I, I I think it's it's a great little pen. I love the functionality. I love the way they made this. That rubber O-ring just gives a bit of grip for the cap. Not too tight. Not too loose. It will not just fly off. Um, I think that's very well designed. The size posted is very comfortable. It's really a normal pen size, I would say. So that's that's very nice. It's definitely slim. You know, I usually care for somewhat bigger, heavier pens. Um, but this is not unpleasant to hold. I don't find the section slippery. What I would like is some type of converter that would fit, just because I like to use bottled ink, but that's asking for a lot. Considering the extremely small size of the pen, how little space there is, I guess we'll just have to do work with this. Maybe refill cartridges a little less practical on the road, but so is bottled ink, really. Um, I think it's a lovely pen. I think it has a lot going for it. And what is really going to tip you over is going to be the nib. I'm pretty sure of that. So that's what I'm going to show you next. Let's do a writing sample. But before we do that, let's take a couple of measurements. First of all, the weight. You know I'm using an analog letter scale, so it's not extremely precise, but it'll give you an indication. I come to a little over 10 grams, maybe 11 grams or something. Then we have my calipers. Um, capped. I come to about 90, what is that, 99 millimeters, so that really is a small pen. Um, and uncapped, I guess this, I'm not sure whether this really makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Tim, for the tip that was really useful to not use the narrow bit, but the broad bit for the this measurement, because the nib is so small. Uh, sometimes I marvel at my own stupidity why I didn't think of that myself but thank you for pointing that out to me I come to 85 millimeters uncapped now in this case I'll also take a measurement posted if I can yes it's just big enough I come to 141 millimeters uh, which is a decent size I would say section diameter I think it's not tapered I think it's the same yes um, so I can only take I should only take one measurement. That is nine millimeters. It's not a, a fat section, just to be sure. 
Yes, at the bottom it's the same thing, 9 millimeters. So there you have it. I think we need to see this pen in action. I'm going to do a writing sample. I'm going to do it now. I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go <clears throat> with the Auto Tasha Pen. Auto Tasha, I forgot to see. Sorry, Tasha. Uh, the nib, I would say, is something between F and M. Um, and the ink is just some cartridge. I honestly, I just pulled it from a huge stack of cartridges and it's obviously black. Um, but that's that's pretty much all the suit. You know what? This may actually well be the... This was probably the cartridge that came with the pen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Okay. The paper is Rhodia. And this is the pen. So let's do a bit of writing. See what we can do. You feel a bit of feedback when you write. I wouldn't call it scratchy. There's no scratch, there's just a bit of feedback. Um, <clears throat> a bit of fast writing. There you go. No skipping. Wetness. Well, for a nib that's relatively fine, I don't think it's doing badly. It's not super wet, but as you can see, it's definitely not dry. Now, <clears throat> the thing where this pen really gets interesting is the line variation it offers. I had the same thing with that F. Lapa pen. Of course, you should never push a nib too far, but for a steel nib... You see, the feed has some issues to keep up with this excessive ink demand. When I go very slow, it works. And the amount of line variation... is priming the feed a bit there. The amount of line variation is quite impressive. It's clearly not a flex pen. It's not meant as such. But this can definitely add a flourish. your writing. You have to go slower. I don't want to take this too slow because I want to bore you to death. But as you can see, you can actually squeeze out quite a bit of line variation. And yes, the feed will have some issues. But what you can do, <coughs> if it's important to you, is just make sure there really is some ink in there. Make sure the cartridge is back in all the way and just squeeze. So I primed the feed, I tap it gently a few times, get some ink into the channel. Now that, I would say, is a nice bit of line variation for a pen of this caliber. It is steel, careful you don't bend it, careful you don't spring it, and the tines won't spring back. Um, don't overdo it, but you can definitely apply a bit of pressure without the pen just dying on you. Um, especially when you prime the feet a bit. You can get away with quite a bit, I think. And that's actually fairly nice. So there you have it, I think that is something that is really nice about this pen. That line variation, very cool. With this goes from fine to, I would say, a good broad, which is not bad at all, especially because it's not marketed as being a flex pen. I think it's awesome. And that's all there's to it. So, I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.